Last year, Apple released its first smaller tablet, the iPad Mini. It admittedly wasn't its best work, but this year it's upgraded the iPad Mini with a retina display and better internals. Is it worth the upgrade or the extra cash? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is our full review of the Apple iPad Mini with Retina Display. Externally, the iPad Mini looks virtually identical to its predecessor. It bears the same exact design, and it's even the same width and height. However, it is marginally thicker and heftier, 0.3 millimeters thicker and about 23 grams more, we assume to accommodate for the new display and larger battery. The speakers, lightning port, camera placement, and every last external detail has been left untouched, with the exception of one thing, an additional microphone on the backside near the top edge. As far as hardware concerns go, there's practically nothing to complain about. The new iPad Mini is unbelievably thin, lightweight, and feels as premium as any other high-end tablet out there. But what about its internals? Those aren't half bad either. If you recall the specifications from our iPad Air review, the new iPad Mini spec sheet is practically a duplicate of its larger siblings. It features the same A7 chipset, which is composed of a 1.3GHz dual-core CPU with a quad-core GPU, 1GB of RAM, a 5MP rear camera, 1.2MP front shooter, and 4 storage options, 16, 32, 64, and 128GB. The battery keeping the show running is rated at 23.8 Watt hours. And finally, the resolution of its 7.9 inch display has been improved from 1024 by 768 pixels to 2048 by 1536 pixels, quadruple the resolution, or double the density at 324 pixels per inch. The Retina display is leaps and bounds better than last year's iPad mini display, which was noticeably washed out, pixelated, and subpar in many ways. This time around, the display is incredibly sharp. Colors could pop a little more, but the contrast is passable and black levels are fairly inky. Beside the larger iPad Air, however, it's easy to see the display is not quite as saturated. That's not to say the iPad Mini's Retina display is bad. By no means is it, but comparatively speaking, it's clear to see the colors simply aren't as vibrant as you may be used to seeing if you're coming from a full-sized iPad. The iPad Mini is the most well-built, high-end tablet under 8 inches. Period. Of course, it comes running the very latest software from Apple, iOS 7. We've covered iOS 7 extensively in previous reviews and walkthroughs, so we won't waste too much time here. We will say, however, that the software is very fitting on this tablet, more so than the full-sized iPad Air. There are a lot of ways iOS could be further improved, such as a split-screen view for simultaneous use of two apps or more. But the new interface is refreshing, the multi-touch gestures make task switching incredibly fast and intuitive, and the amount of content available is practically endless. There are literally hundreds of thousands of applications made for iPads, as well as countless books, movies, television shows, games, magazines, and other content which more than make up for the shortcomings of iOS. All the improvements of iOS 7 are welcomed. But with competition like the Galaxy Note series, which allows for true multitasking, it's clear Apple cannot rest on its laurels. Unlike the previous model, which was clearly underpowered, the performance on the iPad Mini with Retina Display is buttery smooth. Like we found with the iPad Air and iPhone 5S reviews, the A7 chip on the iPad Mini is powerful. The dual-core CPU and the quad-core GPU make the new Mini markedly better than its predecessor for gaming and other graphic-intensive stuff, such as multimedia playback and constant task switching. It's quick at just about everything you throw at it, and its performance in various benchmarks was exactly what we expected, comparable to the iPad Air. Speaker quality is passable, but we have some issues with it. Primarily, the location of the speakers, just as with the Air, is questionable. Unlike many other tablets which offer true stereo output, which is great for multimedia playback without headphones, the iPad Mini speakers are divided around the lightning port. In landscape, this makes it incredibly easy to muffle said speakers with the palm of your hand. And even when you're not muffling the speakers, the sound is unbalanced and comes from only one side of the tablet. This is still one of those sore points in the Mini's design. Battery life, on the other hand, is great. The increased display resolution and power call for a larger battery, which Apple increased from 16.3 to 23.8 watt hours. As per usual, Apple claims the iPad Mini will survive 10 hours of usage. And in our testing, we can confirm the battery life on the iPad Mini with Retina Display is as great as ever. We only had to charge the new iPad Mini every other day, even through days of unusually heavy usage. Gaming, benchmarking, multitasking, web browsing, and much more. It is possible to fully drain the battery in a single day, but it takes intent. 
Most will survive a day and a half with no problem. The camera on the new iPad mini isn't terrible. The rear image sensor offers a max resolution of 5 megapixels. In great lighting conditions, it provides passable images, which unfortunately offer more noise and artifacts than most recent high-end smartphones will. Stills have low contrast, they're often dull, and they often err on the warm side, and the camera is quick to overexpose, and the dynamic range could certainly be better. Video quality, on the other hand, is great. Colors are more true to life, and the audio is decent, though pans are a bit on the jittery side. On the side of a noisy street here in Charlotte. In all, the iPad mini with retina display is everything we wanted in a remake of the original. The only factors we can even begin to complain about are the slightly washed out display, the speaker location, and price. Truthfully, to complain about the display is pedantic. It's super sharp, and we only noticed the difference in saturation when it was beside other tablets. The speaker placement is also a minor issue. And starting at $400 and climbing $100 per capacity model and another $130 for LTE connectivity, the price isn't terrible. After all, this miniature tablet features the same exact specifications as the iPad Air, and its base price is $100 cheaper. Frankly, we think the iPad mini with retina display is great, and for that, we give it a 9.2 out of 10. Thanks for watching everyone, that's going to wrap up this review. If you enjoyed it, let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below, drop a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one in the future, and videos from the rest of the PocketNow crew. Be sure to follow us on all the usual places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.